Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a QA. and a I asked you guys to ask me questions and um, we have a lot of questions that we're gonna go through. And let's see, I'm gonna pick the best one. My hair looks very interesting right now. I am going for the curly look. I'm trying this new device. I think it's called the Waver from Alan Truman. It's those three, you know, clips where you just tong it sort of a thing i don't know i'm just like figuring the tool out and if i like it which i think i really do it looks so nice it's literally how my hair would look if i actually did the curly girl method and took care of it but no <laughs> all right guys so without further ado let's quickly jump into your questions because it's been a while which lenses do you wear? They are so pretty and what are the number? All right, so they are numbered. The left one is minus four and the right one is minus 4.25. But I've always had a number ever since I was a child. And yes, I cannot do without my glasses or lenses. Uh, without them, I cannot see and I cannot function. So I wear them all the time. Either lenses, I have colored lenses, I have regular lenses and I have spectacles that I wear. But um, you get this one fresh look, dude. It's fresh look and the color is gray. It's the most standard lens you'd find um, in any spectacle store. So I've been wearing this ever since I can remember and they suit me the best. And they don't look artificial, you know? Some lenses are like, okay, lens penny wear. This looks nice. A thing you learned in your modeling time which you still follow. I think I have the same sort of grooming techniques. Body hair was not like celebrated and loved as much as it is now. But obviously models, you know, so we always used to shave and keep it tip top. Our hair used to be a certain way. So I think I still have those grooming um, techniques and it comes from my pageantry actually. It goes all the way back. Yeah, I think that's one thing I learned from my modeling. Also to carry all your nude bras, um, silicones, tapes, nipple tapes, anywhere you go for fittings. I know that I have to tie my hair up in a bun and I know I have to carry all my nude and black lingerie and I still do that wherever I go. If it's for a shoot, if it's for anything, I know what to pack in a bag and I think I'm thankful for that because I would be clueless otherwise. Why are parents so tough? Why are they so stubborn to accept the fact that younger kids can be right at times? Oh my god, I get this a lot. Your parents are just bigger children, okay? And as they grow older, they are getting smaller and smaller. They're just becoming children. They need you, they depend on you. You know, it's just literally that mid-age from like 25 to say like 45, where you are like an adult and independent and you don't need anybody. But once you like cross that stage and you become a little old, you kind of like depend on your children and you're too stubborn and you know, whatever you say goes. And I think everybody battles this at home. We could be right sometimes and I agree with you. I think we can be right sometimes just because of age that does not mean that they know everything uh, because you know you have to also move with the times right and I feel like it's so difficult for our parents generation to catch up with this generation I think that we have advanced so much in technology and innovation in general that it is so hard like social media dude mobile phones social media everything came while our parents were taking care of us and raising us. So to catch up to that, it's gonna take a while. It's just a lot happening for them, I guess, around the world and they feel like they're falling back, you know? Also, they come from very old school thinking because their parents, which is your grandparents, they were from like a whole other generation where mobiles still didn't exist only. So they were raised by their grandparents who were like very, very far off, right? That is like another generation, another world only. They have been groomed by them and I feel like that grooming still exists inside them and they cannot seem to catch up and that's why they're trying to just like find their way in the world. So if you can just be patient with your parents, I'm sure they'll come around and if they don't, it's okay. I, I realize that fighting and like like getting upset with your parents is not going to lead you anywhere. You end up getting hurt, you end up feeling bothered, you end up having a fight with them and it just becomes bitter overall. Um, if they are really stubborn and they do not change their mind, that's that. You know, it's something that they'd have to live with and you'll have to live with as well. So instead of trying to change them, maybe try and accept them the way they are because they're not going to change for the most part, you guys. Like, I feel like 80% is going to still be from their grooming from their parents and they're still going to have those values and thought process is like no this is how you should do it this is how you must do it that's how my parents taught me so very very few parents come around to like blending into generations very few so yeah i think we all should just accept our parents and like that's the best we can do to maintain our sanity to be honest
I'm afraid that I'm not gonna get the desired man that I've always wanted. It depends on what you want, darling. Uh, no kidding. You can get the man you want, of course. I feel like it's gonna take time though. You know, a lot of us see everybody get married, have babies, and we feel like we're falling back. When you want to find the right partner, I feel like wait it out. Just because you're getting late to the game and all of your friends have their partners, do not rush into any fun fling relationship and make that your commitment. You know, if you're having a fling and if you're having, like, if you're having fun, let it be that. And your partner really has a hand in who you end up becoming at the end of the day so be very careful in choosing that partner because you know sometimes we go wrong and you you will see the um, adverse effects that has on your mental health on your physical health like you just know when you're not in the right relationship it just feels discomfort and it should feel super easy going it should feel so freeing you know ever since I got engaged to Akhil I told him that on the proposal day itself when he proposed to me I, I didn't feel tied down to anything I didn't feel like oh my God, I'm stuck. I'm never going to meet another man again. Uh, it just felt like, cool, this is this is fun. I feel good now. And we're so free with each other. We give each other so much space and we are both heading in the same direction when it comes to life goals. So you must, must, must talk about all of these things under the umbrella to your almost partner that you're going to commit to for marriage. Even if it's arranged marriage, try to meet them a lot. Try to discover who they are when they're angry. How do they react when they're sad? How do they react? At, who do they go to when they feel low like you need to know their circle entirely and their mood and how they are in low times as well so I think that would give you a good idea of who they can be if they can support you be your backbone man this is a very very subjective question and it is so vast just take your time that's an advice I would give you do not jump into anything you are not sure of it does not even matter if you're like 35 40 you are not sure of him don't go ahead be like this is the guy or girl or my partner I want to grow old with and if you have have that in your mind you'll face anything together so get out of your home I would recommend if you're an introvert and you're expecting someone to just fall on your lap that's not gonna happen you need to get out there you need to meet people you need to get introduced to friends friends who are single join apps if you want I've never been I don't know how that works but I know that people have met through apps do that uh, but you need to put yourself out there. If you don't put yourself out there, you are never going to know who can come and change your life. Like it takes one person, one introduction to change the course of your life and you might miss out staying at home. So get out there. <laughs> Girl, I have a lot of body hair and it makes me feel insecure and I feel like a man. Any tips? I understand because I know that body hair is celebrated a lot and it is one of those things that people are opening up about, which I love, by the way. I love that this generation is making it so comfortable to just be who you are I feel like that's just amazing it's okay if you're not like I don't mind body hair now I really don't I step out like that only but I prefer being hairless that's just who I grew up as like I said I was in the pageantry pageant industry I was in the modeling industry and I prefer to be hairless even today and I enjoy shaving that's just something I love doing it's not a very tedious process for me grooming is fun for me you can shave there are so many razors out there I recommend the Venus the razor it is so good it's got these soap uh, gel bars which are amazing on the skin it's so soft um, so shaving is an option waxing is an option if you're scared don't worry you'll get familiar with the pain um, if you have a very low threshold of pain like me just pick up a razor and shave dude laser is another expensive option it can permanently get rid of your hair it's expensive and it's time consuming but it, it ends up being a good result anyway so yeah I mean if you're insecure about something and if there is a solution to it I feel like you should take that chance you know just go for it see how you feel if you don't feel good again you can always come back don't stay in misery do don't like suffer because of fear I feel like a lot of us do that and you don't know what's on the other side just try now nah. so do it there are multiple hair removal ways and see what you feel I'm sure you're gonna feel good have you ever tried bungee jumping absolutely not like girl like I am the most non-adventure person you will ever meet I feel like Akhil Akhil met his total opposite when it comes to that like he loves and when I say loves he's addicted to falling off things like I don't even know I'm like can you please not fall off things like I just got married to you can I spend like few more years with you <laughs> we joke around but he wants to jump off cliffs he wants to fly he wants to go under the water he is so adventurous like it is beyond me he's fearless like sometimes I get scared I'm like you're not scared of anything that is weird but I on the other hand I I don't remember the last time I got bruised on my body you know that's how careful I am with my body and my physical self and uh, secondly I'm terrified 
I am terrified of anything happening to me. Like it just takes one second for stuff to snap. You can just go bungee jumping the cord. I don't want to scare anyone, but like the cord could snap, dude. You can be anywhere. That's not in your control. And Akhil keeps saying, yeah, he's like, you know what? Uh, while walking, a car could hit you, a branch could fall on you. That's also a thing. But I'm like, that is like totally out of your control. But this like voluntarily plunging to my death is a volunt <laughs> is a choice that I'm taking. I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw my body from like a thousand feet cliff. That's a choice I'm making. And if I do that, I'm calling for any sort of trouble to happen. So I'm just like... Thank you, but no. I will do snorkeling at the best. I'll say on the surface level of the water, that's the most adventurous I've been. I will not do bungee jumping. I will not go skydiving. I will not jump off a cliff. That is just not who I am. Also, I cry like a baby on roller coasters. I am not an adventure theme park kind of girl. Like that's not something I enjoy. I will not sit on the roller coaster. And Akhil has forced me. I have sat and I've come out bawling my eyes out with terror. I've like, I'm sh I shake heights freak me out um i did rappling once it was one of our dates we went on like years ago and we were like newly dating and stuff so i was like okay i'll do it to impress you i i said no i don't want to do it but he's like come on and when i rappled down i was bawling my ass out it is more like a torture experience to me than like oh let's try this let's see how it goes mm -mm. Yeah, that's not something I'll do, so. Why is that experienced people are hired over people who are freshers and have better skills? When Masic started, okay, when we were supposed to hire people, Veronica and I were like, okay, how do we do this? Because, you know, we're so new to this business. We're like, okay, let's give it a shot. The first person we hired was Tejal, who's our head of operations right now. And she came from very less experience. She just came through Veronica's contact. She knew someone who was looking for a job. She just knew a little bit of operations, you know, and operations is basically in, simple words bringing your vision to life like the end product to you so i will tell tejal i want this 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 i want the packaging to be like this i want suppose a lipstick i want this cap she goes through all the vendors and she finds what i want and brings it to us okay so that is what she does and she had very less experience especially in a beauty industry my hiring process is totally different than veronica's veronica will be like reading the resume she'll be like asking them skills etc like what are you good at what are your experience and for me i just talk to them like a friend i'm just like who lives with you who's a part of your family how was your childhood where did you grow up and how was the experience working at your past job why did you leave and what do you where do you see yourself in the next five years and i want to know more about them than anything else i want to know that they have the drive to grow with basic beauty and that's how i hire them so it's good that veronica checks the skill part and i just check their personality that's how we hire sometimes you do need a degree because like business you need like an mba or something stuff like that because there's a lot like you know you get paid a lot of money for being skilled let me tell you that like if you have a degree if you have like massive experience your pay is going to be off the charts and especially in a startup dude like mnc's are great like they they don't pay you the best you have to climb the hierarchy and it takes years until you get to the top manager position but for a startup and startups are so many at this point like you should join a startup it's my recommendation to everybody looking for a job you must apply in a startup because startups get funding they have more leadership roles so all of us in the team are our own leaders like we don't have anyone that we follow or we report to all working together everybody is treated the same there is no hierarchy as such so it's really fun you get to give your input and we take your input we work together so you see the process and the brand from ground zero which is fabulous but yes yeah, some skills are required like for an e-commerce person for example who's taking care of the back end of the website they need to know a little bit of shopify they need to know a little bit of um other sort of apps that your website is based on and you need to know how to speak to the the warehouse person coordinate with the warehouse person make sure everything has reached on time updating the website it is a lot of back-end technical work and if you're not skilled at that it's going to be really hard to teach you that right and yeah i think skills just will give you a better pay and better position and easy to choose you if you have a personality a character something to bring to the table drive you're like i think i can do this if you're a go-getter that's all companies look for you just need to be like i got this you give me a task and i promise i will get it done if you have that attitude you'll get hired anywhere and yeah you just need to be well spoken you need to write emails very well um you need to be able to work under pressure really well um i think those are basic things that you require to join a company so so there are startups that are hiring very very fresh people married and have a husband who's abusive insensitive and careless 
I don't have the spine to stand before my family. What do I do? I can't leave because it's about my child's future. I have so much to say on this, dude, and I might even. Just in general, like, apart from this question, my girls, you freaking need to be independent. Like, I don't know how much I can stress on that. Like, work day and night. Like, I, I don't even... If you were financially capable today, you would be able to walk out of this family in an instant. Okay, now you are there already, so there's not much you can do for that, but you can walk out of this relationship. You don't have to stand up before anyone. You don't have to justify why you're leaving the marriage. He's abusive, period. You don't need anyone to believe you. You don't need to convince anybody. You know that you're being abused. You know that that's a very bad example set for your child. Now, a lot of mothers think that they are protecting their children by staying in an abusive relationship because um, the father, the abusive father is paying for the child's education and paying for their life together. But you're only doing more damage to the child. You the, That child is literally watching the father beat you up every single day day and he's watching you be upset and sad every single day that is not a healthy marriage and that is not a healthy um, environment for a child to grow up in so as much as you think you're protecting him you are not protecting him that child can actually replicate what the father is doing when he grows up because that's what registered in his mind okay so he either will become abusive or he will have some sort of a personality trait which is disturbing this in no way is gonna help your child grow in blossom okay they they, I don't see where and how I don't see a light here for either of you if possible please please pick up your bags and leave the house and I know that sounds like really Maz how can I just pick up my bag and walk out like I depend on him well now that you're in it the solution is to just walk out with your child file for a divorce get legal involved if you're capable you need to get families involved if someone loves you if someone cares for you dearly get that person involved i promise you they're not going to just leave you in an abusive marriage a family member your brother sister i don't know you got to get someone to show you that support and talk to your in-laws for you if you are scared you are going to be so happy without them of course this is not the kind of life you chose this is not your life please don't stay in an abusive relationship do not stay in a disrespected marriage it is just not okay it's not okay and i know i keep saying walk out because you need to walk out it does not matter it's you rather i honestly think you rather stay in like a shelter or than in an abusive household like i trust me like no one deserves to get hit and beaten every single day of their lives like no dude like pick up your bags and leave the house and figure out where to go later i don't know but i just i feel so much about this like i feel like all of us women just like deal 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 we're just like compromising and we're okay with things like that we're okay with this we're okay with that why the heck should we be okay with anything that we don't want happen to us that is not okay like so please do something about it find a solution and if you want an awesome future for your kid if you want him to not turn out like his father you need to walk out of that marriage and it is the only solution to your happiness your peace and your children's your child's future figure out a way to make money like that's something you should do like i feel like this is where we get stuck like if you're not getting love compassion admiration respect in your marriage you need to walk out that is it but i said a lot but no man it's true and do all of my young girls listening you it does not matter if you're in a happy marriage if you're in the best relationship possible you need to be 100 percent independent to the fact that even if you have your dad taking care of you your education or whatever that's awesome congratulations uh but you need to be independent fathers walk out okay boyfriends walk out husbands walk out all these people who we glorify so much sometimes they will walk out okay and you need to be ready for that day okay that day that rainy day where you think is never gonna happen girl it might happen i hope it doesn't happen to anyone that you may get dropped on your ass at any point you may need to walk out of an abusive relationship at any point and for that to happen you need to be mother effing independent if you have to travel two hours for a fabulous job do it do it get serious about your life in your 20s like you need to be 
at that position where you're like if by 30 i am not able to sustain and hold like take care of my own self and buy shit for my own self you have to question your life because if you're not doing that dude you're gonna be in serious trouble at some point in your life because i feel like all of us women at some point have been majorly disappointed by the men in our lives i feel very passionate about this and i i just i feel like just stand up for yourself dude work for yourself like you can like you will work for your children why can't you do that for yourself dude why can't you just make your own money post 22 if you are not earning your own money even if it's like a mere 10,000 rupees and an internship what are you doing with your life if you're not getting consistent income every single month and if you are not saving you are gonna be in deep shit and this is like a reality check you need to understand that because I want all my girls to be independent all my girls watching this video it does not matter if you have 10 10 brothers who are like solid and backing you up you are your own woman you are your own person nobody needs to be paying for your shit nobody needs to be paying for your lifestyle you need to find a job find something that you love be a dance instructor for all i care be a graphic designer do anything like now only those are coming to my mind literally anything that gives you money at the end of the month or like a freelance gig it is it is the most freeing position you can be in at some point now, if you are 45, if you are 55 and your husband has just decided to leave you because he's not in love with you or he just decided to abandon your child and walk away, what the heck are you going to do? What are you going to do? You are going to be dependent on your in-laws for the rest of your life. You don't want to do that. What if your parents are not around to save you? You know, you are your only freaking hero. Okay, you have to save yourself. So I don't care if you are 16 and watching this. I don't care if you are 40 watching this. If you are not earning some sort sort of income on your own you have to check your life all the moms out there if you're listening to me if you have an awesome husband you're settled you have beautiful in-laws you're rich rich has nothing to do with how you empower yourself just because your family is rich it does not make you someone you have to have respect for yourself and how does respect come how do you earn that respect for yourself by being independent by being opinionated by being able to say the things you want to say when you want to say because you can say them being fearless do not be afraid of any freaking body around you nobody has an authority to tell you how to behave to tell you how to sit what clothes to wear if there are people that are telling you how to do certain things that means you're not in the position to put your foot down i'm sure there's something you're good at okay taking tuitions selling achar cooking for other people none of these jobs are demeaning you have to do what you need to do to earn your money social media is a game changer try and come on social media try a small business in social media try buying stuff from amazon and selling stuff on amazon there is so many things you can do it is unreal in today's time if you say like i don't know what to do with my life i can't earn my money i'm dependent on someone i i do not know where that i don't know how to deal with something like that i just don't Please, dude, like, please, you need to be freaking independent, dude. Do not let anybody rule your life. Like, this is such a heartbreaking question. Like, she's willing to... So many women are willing to be beaten by their husband just because they can't afford to walk out, just because they don't have support. They will take the beating so that their children can have food to eat. Do you do you understand how sad that is? Like, and it's only us women who have to go through all this, dude. Like, no, it's just not okay. Started with your wedding prep, can't wait to see in your wedding looks. I've been getting this since two years now, but I'm in the process. I wouldn't even say I'm on stage one, I'm on stage 0.5. I am, um, my team's getting to it. I, I literally do not have the time, but I feel like uh, all of us are looking for venues. I kind of know where I want to get married. It's in India only. I'm pretty sure I want to get married in India. Uh, but I just want a very scenic, beautiful place. And I don't want too much decor. Um, I'm really looking for a little bit of luxe when it comes to wedding. Because I'm very like, I want this to be a certain way. I'm very, very micromanaging kind of person. So I have to yet look for my venue. Yet look for my wedding planner. Like nothing is sorted. But I'm welcome. If anyone's interested, hit me up, girl. Like I'm planning a whole ass wedding. So outfits, venue decor flowers i am in it you have friends 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 who are decor planners wedding planners hit me up because <laughs> i can't do this like i'm shit at planning um stuff so yeah i think i want to get married like in jan next year i i hope 
what do you eat in a day i get this one a lot as well i work out every alternate day every tuesday thursday saturday unless i'm traveling i make sure i go to the gym so i feel like quite fit um in my own little way i've been like a foodie all my life i have never dieted okay never and i never have like even till today i've never been like oh i can't eat this many calories that sugar i can't do it i've ge genetically i'm blessed like i have a very high metabolism rate uh, i came back from the us and i ate so much shit over there that i put on i put on and also i was on the ip um ip i'm saying um i was on birth control and i'm not on birth control anymore because i saw it like eventually it was like affecting stuff internally and i'm like i want to take a break and when i took a break i did put on like a few kgs i did like not a lot but just like 3 kgs you know that whole phase that happened and i was generally feeling very like heavy i was like i don't know i'm not i'm not felt like this in a while two months i haven't worked out two months i have been eating only carbs so all of that took a toll on me but now i feel like i'm back in business baby like literally 3 months going to the gym eating ghar ka khana i've come back to normal and uh, It's all good. I love it. What do I eat? Okay, I wake up and I eat either eggs. I still eat eggs. I am vegetarian, but I don't know if I can. I still eat eggs. Okay, I don't know what that's called. So I eat eggs in the morning. Two toasts, um, baked beans, either that or if I'm like chutti hai, so I eat a idli. Nange idli dosa bake a bake. And yeah, I'll eat like a croissant. I really love a chocolate croissant. you know um so like croissants i love a mushroom quiche i love things like that um i love a good coffee now i'm not a i've moved away from being a chai person i only have chai in the evening so i have a vietnamese cold brew in the morning that's what i eat in the morning in the sorry for lunch i will eat roti sabji jo bhi banate hain i eat that only roti sabji dal that is my standard and then for snacks i'll eat again dosa idli dude I'm a dosa idli stuck. I'm a South Indian so I just freaking love eating my idli dosa every I need it at least once a day. So I eat that. Um nahi to I eat a sandwich if I feel like nahi to some chaat that's my favorite as well and then I'll have a cup of tea and then um I eat dinner straight away. I'm not a very big snacker. I don't like snacking on stuff. Like you'll not see me with a chip packet unless I'm dying of hunger. I will not be sitting and eating chips or like nuts or I'm just no I'm a very meal person. I need breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner and I'm good. I eat four meals in a day. I try to stick to water as my beverage. I used to love Pepsi or Coke. I freaking was addicted to it, okay? I I needed it with every burger. I needed it with every pizza. But now I think soda is so bad for you. I'll have it like once in a month when I feel like I'll just have like two sips. But I try to stick to water. I try having peach iced tea. I love iced teas. I'm very very basic when it comes to uta. Is Mystic Beauty self-funded or you guys have investors? Um it is a completely self-funded brand. It's bootstrapped as they call it. We have no external investors as of now. So yeah. <laughs> What did you want to become except content creator? Girl, I wanted to be an actor. Main actor banna chahti hu. Chahti thi. Abhi pata nahi hoga ki nahi if it's in my destiny then I will probably be in some web series at some point. I'm putting it out there in the universe. um i'm very interested in doing web series and stuff like that but like i'm not chasing it so i guess i'm not like getting it you if you attract it you will get it you know if you like chase that you're going to get it but i'm not like heavily focused on that right now cuz i have a lot going on with mesic and the creator front but i would love to be an actor i'm very like animated and i love performing i love like emoting it's like my favorite thing to do i broke up with my toxic boyfriend but i miss him so much girl of course you'll miss him dude he was your boyfriend but um he was toxic you have written it toxic you will miss him for like 6 months a year and then you will find someone who will change your freaking life and you you don't know what you deserve right now because if you're in a toxic and abusive relationship you think that's what you deserve like you will always think why am i not getting in a fight right now why don't i have drama in my life why is it so silent and happy and effortless that is a real relationship not being like beaten not being verbally abusive not being in dramas not being insecure dude all of these are toxic traits and these are not supposed to be in a relationship okay you will miss him but you will get over him stick to your decision do not get back to him don't do it don't do it <laughs> when is zari coming back um zari is zari will come at 8 pm <laughs> 
no 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 um zari is the perfume she's talking about from our brand mesic beauty uh, zari is going to be um restocked very soon we're just going through some improvements like you guys give us a lot of feedback and we take that very seriously so we're trying to do some changes and changes always take time you're going to get it girl like you're going to get it this year only it's coming but we're working on another other things as well we're sort of like doing stuff now i can't talk about it but we're doing stuff and it'll be for the better have you ever read a romantic erot Ew. Ew. I'm not going to read this. A children on my channel. Best advice you've ever received from your mom to be mother f and independent. Like she literally told me, "Miles, you have to earn your own money and you need to stand on your own foot." Which I keep telling you guys as well cuz I'm your mom. But this is the best advice my mom could give me, dude. Like she's like, "Do not depend on nobody." And also she said, "Move out of your um in-laws house or husband's house after getting married. Move out of your house and build your own nest." That is also another fabulous advice I took to heart and I'm just like, "Absolutely. If I wasn't taught that by my mother, I'd stay." You know, and there's nothing bad in staying. It's just like I've stayed and then I moved out as well and dude it is fantastic and my in-laws will agree as well they're like dude this is the best decision ever <laughs> um we grew so much closer after moving out and we just love each other too much and we see each other all the time i freaking love them it has nothing to do with my love for them it's just that it only makes they built they got a chance to move out and build their family right so why don't you get to do the same why do you have to stay back and be in a joint family i love that advice from my mother be independent and build your own nest after getting married. married to your partner stay close to them stay in the next door if for all i care stay be neighbors but you have to create a separation between your in-laws and yourself okay because it's just going to be a very peaceful marriage it's just going to be nice and you're going to build memories together and you're going to solve your own problems you're not going to depend on your in-law to fix this and fix that they shouldn't let them live their lives <laughs> Top three things on your bucket list. Damn. Okay, I don't. I have a goals and visions list, but I want to get married. Like I want the ceremony to happen. I'll tell you things. I don't know bucket list. I don't have like things that I want to do before I die and all. I'm not that adventurous. I told you that. But um, I definitely want to get married and get the ceremony done with. That's on my bucket list for a long time. I want to walk the red carpet. you know that's a uh, red carpet anywhere in the world i want to walk the red carpet i've never walked a red carpet before and i want to collaborate with um a youtuber that i have been following for a long time so it could be anyone it could be like lily singh it could be desi perkins it could be jeffri star it could be manny nikki tutorials it could be anyone i just want to like collaborate with them um create videos and content with them so yeah there's like so many bucket list uh bucket list items professionally personally i think i want to continue traveling i have like tons of places i want to see i want to see croatia i want to see more of italy all those tiny 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 places uh, i just want to keep traveling dude freaking love traveling why is it croatia in particular it just came to my mind Turks and Caicos, Bora Bora, Hawaii. Oh my gosh, there's so many places I want to go. You're an Oh my god. You guys are like really really raunchy in some questions. How do you maintain your energy? It's so positive and good. I always see an adrenaline rush. Even right now I'm like peppy and I I'm most of the times really like happy because I think I love what I do and and I keep talking about work and I feel like work is a huge part of my life like I don't know what I would do if I didn't have anything to do every day I don't know how people sit and watch TV all day like I'm not that kind of person I love my job I love content creation I love meeting my team I love Veronica Tejal my entire team I love the people I work with and they give me energy when they come into the house they are like pepped and good to go So that fires me up. We have things to do. We have goals to achieve. So it's fun for me. In the content creation side also there's such amazing things happening for me that I'm just like it's go time dude. Like I said you only have a limited period of time where you can kill it. After that dude it's irrelevant. Like you become irrelevant and I'm being very blunt because I know after a few years I'm going to be irrelevant. No one's going to even care because <laughs> there's an influx of other people coming in and they should. There is always like this whole bunch that will go out and a new bunch comes in because there's a new generation that's growing up to be fantastic and you should be at peace with that you should be okay with people coming and replacing you in whatever stance you are in that life and i need to prepare for that you know but so i am there right now i'm at the peak of my 
professional life personal life i need to enjoy that moment and there are days where dude i cannot do it there are days where i'm just like i can't i can't have any meetings today i can't do music i don't want to create content i just want to be i do have those days and i am sometimes upset and pissed for no reason you know but that doesn't serve me the entire day i'm only sulking i'm only like angry at people i'm only saying weird things and i'm like it's not serving me it's not serving anybody around me and i've wasted the entire day so i try to give myself that pep talk like mars today is going to be a good day i in the shower i'm like just love what you're doing just love it every second every opportunity that comes take it forward for it gun for it and just like shoot your shot man that's all i feel i'm like shoot my shot there's a reason i'm so lucky to have people find me relevant i'm so happy that people think that i can do a good job at this this and this people calling me from some part of the world being like can you do this and i'm like wow they know that i exist they know that i can do this for them and that is a fab thing to have in your life and to then curse it and be like oh shit i have to work every day is then you're not accepting your blessing you know you're not like accepting everything that god has given to you he's given you such a good life with so many things where i you want life to just if you can wake up with that pep talk and you can be like just enjoy everything you're doing today i promise you be in a good mood be yourself show up authentically for yourself every single day no matter what you're doing who you're meeting be yourself and you're going to enjoy the ride make sure you are enjoying your journey if you're not enjoying your journey it's time to leave that portion of your life it's time to quit that job that you're not liking that you're going for every day you're sulking you hate your colleagues you hate your boss it's time to move on i feel like it's so hard for people to take decisions like i have to leave if my boss is going to get angry i miss my colleagues i don't know how to like leave this job i've been here for 15 years but now you hate it so where is the fear coming from like you're going to be fine like choose happiness over anything choose peace over anything else choose content do choose bliss like i don't know if you're not at peace and bliss and if you're not secure and if you're not like having a good time then what is it for you know you're going to waste your life just like crying and sulking and being an upset person every day and that is a very blah way to live life so that's why i'm not always like this trust me there are weeks where i'm like pumped with and like today i was like let's go let's go let's go I'm I'm so pumped today. I just feel good. There are days where you just feel good. There are days where you don't. I don't want to see anyone on some days and that's totally fine as well. You it's a part of being a human being, dude. You can't expect to be happy all the time, you know. But you can choose to. You can choose to. How difficult is it to manage Instagram, YouTube and brand and personal life all together? Wow, okay, that seems heavy. And I do. Um I have a solid team. Like when I tell you you need to be able to delegate and Shonda Rhimes said this on Instagram the other day and I'm like Yes. She spoke about delegating stuff and I totally believe in that and so does Akhil. I feel like you need to have a strong support system wherever you are and that's how I'm able to do it personally speaking. You ask me, right? So, I have a team of seven girls in Mesic Beauty that are killing it and that are helping me build the brand and that's why I'm able to do my content creation side of my job. If I did not have the team, firstly I would not set that up like that, but if I did not have a team, I would not be able to do content creation. My content creation I kid you not is also damn consuming. It's time consuming. It needs a team. For the longest time, like for 3 4 years into my career, I did not have a team. I could not afford one to be honest, but I did not have anyone overlooking my stuff. I would send the invoices, I would email the brands, I would get my shit together, and it was a lot. You can't you can't write emails and reach out to brands and film content. It's too much. If you can do it in the initial stages, that's awesome. But once you get to a stage where there are like influx of emails coming in, you want to do bigger things in life you have to hire a team you have to hire someone to be able to assist you and take care of you and there are people that do that out there there are people that are skilled to do the job that you are trying to do why do you want to bust your head trying to do things that you are not good at only in the first place amplify your strengths my strength is selling design so that's what i do for mesic i sell the product really well and i design the product really well because those are my strengths so i will capitalize on that in content creation my job sole job is to create and edit i love to edit i've not given that job to anyone because i love doing it the day it stops being fun for me i will 
give this editing job to someone fully emailing people following up being in touch with brands not my strength it's not something i'm supposed to do i have bigger things to achieve right so uh, my team has been the backbone of wherever i am today without them i am nothing shout out to varsha shout out to anika these two girls are taking care of my content creation side end to end if i need any dress for an event if i need the event to be executed well a v fast order if i need anything to happen operationally logistically content creation wise it's all taken care of by my team and that is how i'm able to produce so many videos that i can do so that's how i balance it out okay i'm not trying to be a superwoman i'm not trying to be a superhero you cannot do everything though you can multitask why should you if you are capable if you can afford it you must hire a team you cannot do it alone do not think that you're being this powerful woman by doing every thing alone you are not you're only cutting your growth short that's what you're doing and um, i feel like mesic is so well taken care of and i can spend time with my husband and my family when i can i have more time to do that i have more time to travel because my team is taking care of everything yeah the more i grow my team grows with me okay so it's not like they're going to be there it's all about growth it's all about encouraging people and get help i don't know why people don't get help get help it's going to change Okay. All right guys, so that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this fun random Q&A. It was super random. I wasn't planning on filming today, but I did and I'm happy I did. Uh it's good to be in touch with you guys once again. I love you so freaking much and please take care of yourself and make good choices and just be happy. Like, you know, do things to keep you happy every single day and i promise you you will be um soaring be the best version of yourself every single day show up authentically shoot your shot these are like stuff i need to put on t-shirts now all right i'm too peppy i need to i need to get this energy off somewhere else all right guys i love you from the bottom of my heart and i will see you in my next video i love you be good take care